tell you, forensics is one of the coolest applications of science there is. Now, for those of you who have siblings or friends that are in high school forensics, like the speech and debate, that's not the kind of forensics I'm talking about. I'm talking about the biology and the chemistry and the physics and the toxicology that detectives use in order to reconstruct the scene of a crime. Now, I remember as a middle schooler going to the library, and I always headed to the adult nonfiction section because in that section, there were these really big books on different crimes that had happened, and they were written by the leading experts in the field. So they always had so many more details about the crime and about the science that was used to solve it. Many more details than were in the kids section. It was so interesting to me. In fact, if I hadn't chosen teaching as a career, I can pretty much guarantee you I would have been in forensic science. Now today, I want you to put your detective caps on because this lab is about learning how to lift fingerprints. So fingerprint comparison is just one of the ways that detectives are able to link multiple crime scenes to the same suspect. We see fingerprint lifting on crime shows all the time because if you look at your finger, the combination of whorls and arches and loops in fingerprints are unique to every single human. Lucky for detectives, humans leave fingerprints behind on just about everything that we touch with our bare hands. Now, we leave two types of fingerprints, visible, which are marks left on a surface by dirty or oily fingers, and latent fingerprints, which are left by sweat and amino acids and other organic residue from our skin. Two types of prints require two types of lifting, so let's get started. So I want you to take just kind of a small flat object and go ahead and touch it in a few places so that you can leave prints. Um, I'm going for pretty obvious prints here because I am not fantastic at this fingerprint lifting yet. So I'm going to stick some lotion on so that we've got a little bit more residue. So go ahead and just touch that object in a few places and you should be able to see, if you have lotion on, you should be able to see some fingerprints there. Now you're going to take some of this powder and I'm going to go ahead and do this on top of a paper so that it's a little less messy, but just sprinkle a little bit on top of the places that you touched. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> so messy. Ah. Okay, so now that we've got our powder, this is where your makeup brush comes in because you're just going to kind of real gently dust the extra powder off. You want to try to do it without destroying the fingerprint that's underneath. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but in the light, we've got some cocoa powder kind of sticking to that residue. Then you're going to take a piece of tape. And you're going to lay it over the top of those prints. Now you got to be super careful with this step. We don't want to destroy the integrity of that print. Go ahead and lay it on top. And then you're just going to lift. You're going to have to practice it a few times, but if you can see that print right there, that's what we're aiming for, okay? So once you've got some practice with this whole dusting for fingerprints, because it's kind of tough at first, if you want to create for yourself almost a lineup or kind of a mini database of fingerprints, just like the FBI has, you can go ahead and take the prints of your family members. So if you color a small section of paper, get a whole bunch of that graphite from the pencil on there, And then have each of your family members take their finger and get it nice and graphited. Their fingers will be a little messy afterwards, but hey, it's all for the sake of science, right? All right, so you see that right there? We're going to take a piece of tape 
and we're gonna have your family members just roll right on to that piece of tape. You're gonna peel it and you should have a fingerprint. I don't know if you can see that. We'll put it up against our contrasting paper and it should be a little better. So really you can kind of create for yourself a database of fingerprints based on the whorls and arches that you see for each family member. Once you've got that, go ahead and with parent permission, see if you can test some other surfaces like doorknobs or faucets and find out if you can match your known fingerprints to the unknown fingerprints that are around the house. I want you to think about this question. What caused the fingerprints and what allowed you to see the fingerprints? With our second technique, chemical fumes react with the organic substances from your hands to cause invisible fingerprints to all of a sudden appear. Our second method of lifting fingerprints requires super glue, so you want to make sure that you have parent permission for this. So I'm going to take this small object here and just for the sake of getting some practice, we're going to wipe it off so it's clean. I'll go ahead and leave a latent fingerprint on there and I can't really see it, which is why we need this other method of fingerprint taking. As soon as you've got that, you're going to open that airtight jar and put your foil inside at the very bottom. And go ahead and put just a few drops of super glue at the bottom of your foil. You're going to take your object and stick it inside, but make sure that it is not touching the super glue. You're going to close up that jar and put it into your hot water. Just let it sit there for a couple minutes. So after your few minutes, AKA 15 to 20 minutes, you're gonna go ahead and take that jar out of the water and open it up. Then you're gonna pull your object out of the jar. And you're gonna look and just see if you can see any fingerprints that would have been kind of drawn out by the fumes from that super glue. So the nice thing about putting it in a jar or a bowl of hot water is that it helps the fumes to be released from that super glue a whole lot more quickly. That fingerprint should be showing up as white on your surface there. So go ahead and hold it up to the light and see if you can't pick it out. So certain chemical fumes are reacting with the sweat and the other organic residue that are left in the latent fingerprints. Now, those strong fumes are from a compound called cyanacrylate, which is found in superglue. That chemical reaction causes the residue to turn white so that you can actually see it. We used a pretty simple technique with substances that you could probably find around your house but professionals sometimes will also use a compound called 9-hydrin, which does also react with amino acids in organic residue, and silver nitrate powder. And when both of those together react and are put under UV light, they're able to also see those latent fingerprints. Like anything, lifting fingerprints well requires a lot of practice, but hopefully this gave you an idea of what professionals in the field have to do in order to either reconstruct a crime scene or try to look for a lead when they hit a dead end. Make sure that you clean up your lab materials. I don't want cocoa powder and cornstarch left all over your house for your parents to clean up, but do shoot me some pictures of the fingerprints that you guys were able to collect.